On May 8, 2024, TPL celebrated 175 years of educational excellence. I'm often asked why is it important that we study the history of our school district. There's two reasons for that answer. First, TPS is the third oldest entity in the history of Toledo. Therefore, the history of the school district is really the history of the city. Secondly, history is often secular. Everything that we do today has often been done in the past, and it is important to study that as well. For example, 100 years ago at Scott High School during their championship debate, the topic of discussion that day was about immigration. We're still having those same conversations today. Therefore, it's very important to make sure we've understood what we've done in the past so that we can move forward for our future. Most Toledoans know that the city of Toledo was incorporated in 1837. Prior to that, there were two small towns, Port Lawrence and Vistula. In 1830, Harriet Whitney became the first teacher in the area. This was prior to the inception of Toledo Public Schools. We actually have records of her students rowing across the Maumee River in canoes in order to attend classes. Another teacher at that time was Cyrus Fisher and also Harriet Daniels. When the city of Toledo was incorporated in 1837, it was initially divided into wards. You can see here in this photo, Ward 1 and Ward 2 were the main business areas of the city. Most of the original schools from Toledo Public Schools history can be found in these wards. Ward number three was the proposed expansion that would occur as the city grew. On May 8, 1849, Toledo Public Schools is established. We actually have the record from that date and these are the election of the officers that would oversee the district. Charles W. Hill is considered the father of TPS. He was a well-known attorney in the Toledo area and actually was commandant of Johnson's Island, the prisoner of war camp during the Civil War. He was elected to the Toledo Board of Education in 1854 and remains our longest serving board member in TPS history. It was Charles Hill who introduced the legislation in the city of Toledo to create Toledo Public Schools. LaGrange School was the first brick building built in TPS in 1851. It stood there for many years. This is actually a picture from 1877 and is the oldest class photo that we have in our archives. On August 15, 1853, the cornerstone for Toledo High School was laid. This building and stereograph that you are looking at gives an insight into what downtown Toledo looked like during the 1850s. The tower that you see holding the clock and the bell are actually facing Michigan Street. The clock had dials that were seven feet tall and could be seen all over the city. The bell at the top was tuned to the note D and weighed over 4,000 pounds. It was used as the city's first fire alarm. Toledo High School opened in 1854, and this picture facing the front facade, you can see the Miami and Erie Canal running through the front of it. What made Toledo Public Schools unique was the fact that it offered equal education to female students at that time. Philadelphia, Boston, nor New York were allowing female students to attend their high schools. The very first graduating class of TPS High School in 1857 had a woman, Olive Parmalee. It's important to note that early educational laws had an impact on education in Northwest Ohio. First of all, early educational laws only provided free education to Caucasian students. Because there was no compulsory attendance, students could come and go as they pleased or as their parents pleased. Finally, on June 26, 1871, the TPS Board of Education voted four to three for the elimination of separate classes for African-American students, therefore the full integration of TPS in 1871. Throughout the six, 1860s, 1870s, 80s, and 90s, TPS expanded exponentially. These are some of the original school buildings that housed our students. All of these that you're looking at have now been torn down or rebuilt and renamed. You'll notice in the bottom right-hand corner, Illinois School was once at 11th and Moorish Avenue, now 11th and Illinois. This was the first home of Toledo University. On this second slide, all of the schools, again, have been torn down, rebuilt, or renamed with the exception of Indiana School at Detroit and Indiana Avenues. There's just a small section of this building remaining, although it's very difficult to discern the facade if you drive by. 
Finally, on all these schools on this last slide, they have all been torn down, rebuilt, or completely demolished. As I mentioned in 1871, TPS voted to have the full integration of African American students into the high school. What precipitated this vote was a young man named Alonzo A. Lott. He was attending school and he wanted to attend TPS High School, but the Board of Education denied him that opportunity. Alonzo A. Lott, instead of becoming upset, wrote a letter to the editor of the Toledo commercial that was owned by Clark Wagner. He used the power of his pen to petition the board to change the direction of TPS. He was initially denied the opportunity, but after 1871, he was granted the opportunity and he came back to TPS and he graduated in 1874. Teacher training during this time was very nominal. There were no colleges for teachers to attend. At the turn of the century, there would be what were called normal schools where you could go to get an education in order to become a teacher. But in 1877, as you can see, Maria Hibbert here had no formal training whatsoever. Oftentimes, teachers came in, observed veteran teachers, or simply substituted for a couple weeks. In our TPS records, we have numerous teachers that were actually fired and let go because they could not discipline the students. In 1885, the Toledo Manual Training School was built adjacent to the Toledo High School. In this photo on the left-hand side, you can see the tower from Toledo High School, and the Manual School is facing Adams Street. The school opened in 1885 for boys to became, become familiar with manual training techniques. The following year in 1886, the domestic science department opened, allowing women to also learn manual training. In 1889, the Ohio State Legislature passed a compulsory law requiring all students from ages 14 to attend class. TPS actually hired its first truant officer, John Disher, at that time. Due to this state legislation, enrollment at TPS doubled. Sadly, on March 10, 1895, Toledo High School caught fire. In this photo, you can see the top of the building and its burnt out section and the bell is no longer there. The bell actually fell to the basement and remained there for many years. The bell was moved to the manual training school, as you can see here in front of the building. In 1917, the bell was officially moved over and dedicated in front of Scott High School, where it remains today. One can see the dents and the cracks from the fire. Ada M. Ritchie spent nearly 50 years teaching for the district and was a beloved teacher at Scott. Following the fire, students were dispersed throughout downtown businesses to take classes, including the Toledo Main Library. In 1898, the next high school, Toledo High School, built on the same site, was opened. Before the advent of social media, radios, televisions, and movies, students at the high school level participated in many clubs. These are some pictures from the 1899 Toledo High School yearbook. Another opportunity that Toledo High School students had was to join fraternities and sororities at that time. Today, we don't have those types of clubs, but they were very important back then. In 1904, Pauline Steinem becomes the first female elected to any public office in the city of Toledo. She is elected to the Toledo Board of Education. After witnessing firsthand the overcrowding at the old Toledo High School, which you can see here in this photo of classroom number 40, she petitioned the board to put on a $500,000 bond levy that would eventually build Scott and Waite High School. In 1913, Jessup W. Scott High School opened. It was designed by Toledo well-known architect David Stein. This rare photo shows the building on the backside shortly after opening. You can see the trees and the janitor's house that was situated there. Building operators and janitors were required to live on site during these times in order to maintain the boilers and the heating systems in these buildings. Scott High School had a well-known orchestra in 1916, and this stage was actually the premiere of Handel's Messiah that was sung by the Toledo Choral Society. The well-known Turkey Day football games were held at Scott and its sister school, Wade High School, in their stadiums. 20 to 30,000 individuals would come out and pack these stadiums on a yearly basis. Another event that occurred in 1913 
was when TPS hired the first African-American teacher, Frances Irene Ambers. She was a graduate from Toledo High School in 1911 and in 1913 became a teacher for her alma mater. To this day at the University of Toledo, there is a scholarship named after her for any student who would like to enter education. Waite High School opened in 1914. A sister design, again by David Stein, to Scott High School. It was actually scheduled to open in 1910, as you can find on the front door. However, due to wage and labor disputes, it wasn't opened until 1914. Also, the idea that it was built back is completely false. David Stein always intended for Waite to face East Toledo. Ironically, the first school named after Morris and R. Waite was actually pictured here on the west side of the river, located at Waite and Fernwood Avenues. The name became very confusing when Waite High School in East Toledo opened, so it was changed to Roosevelt in 1919 to help avoid confusion. Theodore Roosevelt had just passed away. It stayed named Roosevelt for a long time and was rebuilt in 1964 and then renamed to honor Dr. Martin Luther King in 1968. The old Glenwood School has an identical design to this building. In 1916, Fulton School that you see pictured here was known for leaving their windows open all year round, including the winter. There was a movement throughout the United States in education that as students were becoming ill, the thought was to provide open air classrooms so that students would have better air circulation. Students would have to wear heavy coats, parents served hot chocolate, and everyone enjoyed it except when their inkwells froze. In 1918, the Toledo Cripple School opens with Naki Wright as the teacher with six girls and two boys. This building would officially be named Charles Fieldbach School in 1924. Toledo Public Schools worked hand in hand with the Toledo Rotary to make this school a reality. In 1923, Libby High School opened. Originally known as Southside High School until the Board of Education officially named it after Edward Drummond Libby, we actually have all of the construction photos in our TPS archives. In 1928, Woodward High School opened in the North End. It was named after Calvin Woodward, the only high school that is not named for a local Toledoan. This school was actually started downtown in the old Toledo High School as a manual training facility. And when it was needed, it moved to a comprehensive high school in 1928. During the Great Depression, enrollment at TPS tops 45,000 students. Due to funding sources, Construction was halted until the Works Progress Administration helped offset this loss by providing funding for painting, maintenance, and construction of nine high schools, including Old Orchard School that you see pictured here. In 1938, Mac Humber Vocational High School was built. It was said that the lights never went off at Mac Humber as it provided education for both students during the day and adults at night. E.L. Bowser, superintendent of Toledo Public Schools at this time, was very forward thinking as he knew that war was coming. He invited the National Defense Organization to come into MacCumber, and MacCumber actually switched curriculum in order to prepare for war production. Its sister high school for females, Whitney High School, opened the following year in 1938. It featured cosmetology, a tea room, and it integrated females into the workforce, especially in downtown businesses. In 1944, Emery Leverett becomes the first African-American administrator in TPS when he is hired to become assistant principal of Gunkel School and then principal of that building. The old Hamilton School on Manhattan Boulevard would later be renamed Leverett Junior High in his honor. After World War II, with servicemen and baby boomers, the city of Toledo grew, necessitating two new high schools. For the first time in TPS history, two high schools would open up simultaneously. In 1962, in the top left photo here is Bowser High School and also Roy C. Start High School. In 1966, Adams Township is annexed by the city of Toledo. All of the schools in the township, including Rogers High School, which was built in 1956, became part of Toledo Public Schools. Another great success story happened in 1974. 
Glendale School and Philbox School were both in need of repairs and rebuilding. So TPS combined the schools in order to form one school that would provide an ideal educational setting for the inclusion of physically impaired students. During the 1970s, TPS had the second largest vocational program in the state of Ohio. As students went off to college, they also worked with their hands learning a trade, and many of them stayed here entering local businesses and foundries. Today, TPS boasts over 30 different career technology education programs that are housed in many of our different high schools. In 1990, Crystal Ellis became the first African-American superintendent in TPS history. He would later return when it was needed during some contentious union negotiations and became chief of staff for a while. Mr. Ellis was beloved by the school district and passed away in 2024. So what sets TPS apart after 175 years? Yes, we were progressive in some areas. We had the first manual training. We offered education to women. But what really makes us unique is the fact that TPS has always opened its doors to all students of every race, every ethnicity, to those who have physical and mental impairments, to immigrants, to anyone who walked through our door TPS for 175 years has provided a chance for every child.